There always has been, and probably always will be, a discussion about idols and their age. Well, actually, there's probably not much discussion going on at all. Most of the time when I see it, it's usually people vilifying the Japanese for being disgusting, perverted old men, and how they could let this form of entertainment exist. Or it's the other side putting their head in their hands, wondering how people could have misinterpreted all of this without even a second thought. If you wanted me to give you one definitive answer on why idols always tend to be in their teenage years, I would tell you that at that point in their life, it's because they're the most free. Even in America, we have this concept. When you're young and in high school, what other responsibilities do you really have? For most of us who grew up in simple lives without intense hardship or tragedy, you went to school, maybe you had a part-time job, but outside of school and work, your time was mostly yours. You don't have the pressures of providing for a family. You don't have any really major bills to pay. I'm not trying to say that teenage lives aren't stressful. When I was a teenager, my life was super stressful. But looking back on it, I think it was a lot less stressful than my life now. And so when you're in your teenage years, you have the time to be an idol. You have the time to run around and goof off and do things that you may or may not want to pursue in the future. So in Japan, the coming of age ceremony is when you hit 20. That's when you're seen as an adult and then you're allowed to drink or smoke or enter into contracts without your parents' consent. So this is a significant point because let's say you wanted to be a professional at something. Let's say you wanted to be a ball player or a singer. If you wanted to be a professional and go full time when you reached quote unquote adulthood, would you wait until your 20th birthday and suddenly pick up a tennis racket and say, I'm going to start training to be a tennis player? Of course not. You would start earlier. You would start early enough so that you could build up experience and get to know your craft. And then by the time you hit adulthood, you'd know whether you wanted to continue with it or maybe it's just not your thing or you're not cut out for it. And at that point, you could shift gears into whatever you deem as being an adult, whether that be getting a job, starting a career or building a family. I think it's also important to note that idols are never seen as the end goal. It's not like people aspire to be idols and that's what they want to do for the rest of their life. The idol profession has always been a stepping stone. Most idols aspire to be talents or actresses or singers. Sometimes they want to be in newscasting or they want to go the Enka route. And so they use this as a way to get their foot in the door. Again, it's like a trial period or like a specialty school. Some schools are better than others and better equipped and have more contacts. So your success may be dependent on which management you sign with. So when you look at these factors, it's pretty obvious why idols usually tend to be in their teenage years. I mean, it makes logical sense, right? What 28 year old is going to suddenly say, I want to start my career now. Let me go try to sing and dance on stage and see if I'm any good at it. There are of course other reasons why girls in their teens are the preferable choice when picking candidates for idols. I'll go over more of them in tomorrow's video. But for now, just know that idols have always been young, but that wasn't their selling point. It's being able to watch them mature into adults. That's where the fandom comes from. As always, thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow.